Okay, so in order of operations, this is 5.4F, but it also goes along with the objective of learning the order of operations. So we are learning to simplify numerical expressions that do not involve exponents because, like I said, when exponents um, will not be really introduced currently, but you do know what they are because of the anchor chart. Um, at including up to two levels of grouping. So we're going to simplify the numerical expressions that do not involve exponents with one and two levels of grouping. The P. What are we going to see when we're on the P of order of operations? Will. And. Group, right? So this is where they group them together and they use parentheses and brackets, okay? So the parentheses look like this and the brackets stand a little taller to group that expression. Okay. Got it all? Good job. Okay, what's the E represent? Exponent. Exponent. There you go. Now remember in the video, the next step is still left to right, right? And D. Multiplication. Multiplication and division. So it'll be a lot easier if you just write multiply and divide. Which comes first? You sure? Very good. You work them from left to right. And A and S? Addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction. So we can just use add and subtract. Very good. And again, however it appears, going from left to right, first come, first serve.
Okay, on the exponents, we don't introduce them. See, this one even actually tells us, till sixth grade. So when we start getting ready for sixth grade at the end of the year, then I'll probably show you some uh, exponents, okay? Now we have numerical expressions. The definition says that that is math sentences containing numbers and operations with no equal sign, okay? So we'll take a look at a few of those here in just a minute. Math sentences. Containing numbers and operations. There is no equal sign. You know what the equal sign is, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, they're giving us two sets of examples, one with one level of grouping and one with two levels of grouping. So in one level of grouping, we see the parentheses. In two levels of grouping, we see brackets, okay? You ready, Kay? All right, so we have 10 minus parentheses, 3 times 2 in parentheses, plus 5. What goes first, Krista? Parentheses. parentheses. So what is 3 times 2? Six. 6. So just like in the wrap, you're going to put that under your grouping, and then you're going to rewrite it as a new expression. This way you stay in order and you can follow the order of operation. So our new expression is 10 minus 6 plus 5. What comes first? Jacob. Excellent. What is 10 minus 6 class? 4. Four. So again, bring that under the expression and write down what's left. Yes, ma'am. You can do it. What do we have left? Four plus six. Four plus five. Four plus five, and that is what, Morgan? Nine. Nine. I always like to box that answer because if you watch the expression, you start to create an upside down triangle. And this again is where it's super important to stay in line and bring everything down where it should be brought down or you end up missing a step. Okay?
Thumbs up if you're ready. All right. The next one is 7 times 2 in parentheses minus 2 times 2, no parentheses. So what comes first? 7 times 2. 7 times 2. What's 7 times 2? 14. 14. What am I going to do next? What comes after right. writing 14? Um, two times two. Minus, two, two times two. Minus two times two. So do I do 14 minus two first, or do I do two times two first? Two times Very good. Multiply and divide first. So what is two times two? Four. Four. Now what? Perfect. Now, is, is that simple enough? Yes. Okay, let's throw a kink in it. Thumbs up if you're ready for the next one. Okay. So when we see brackets and we see parentheses, what do you think is going to come first? Brackets. Take a look at it. You sure? Okay, let's let's think about this. If I did the brackets first, do I know yet what the four times two would be? No. So I've got to complete the 4 times 2 to be able to do anything with the 9 that's in those brackets, right? Yes. Okay, so what would we do first? 4 times 2. 4 times 2. What do we get with 4 times 2? 8. eight. eight. Now this again is where those of you that are that are still struggling with getting your plus signs and your multiplication signs in when we do the multiplication algorithm, you've got to make sure that those brackets are there, the plus signs are there, all of your operational signs are there because this becomes more work if we don't put them in the right order, right? Carter, you okay? So what do you think comes next now that we've done the parentheses, Jacob? Excellent. So we're going to go ahead and finish off those brackets because that's still part of the grouping, right? What is 9 plus 8? 17. 17. So we bring down 17 and copy the rest. Good job. 17 times 2 is 34. Okay, let's let everybody get caught up on that. next one they throw in a little bit of a challenge for us we have five plus bracket three times parentheses four plus four and parentheses and an end bracket what are we going to do first 
the parentheses, right? Because we can't do anything with that three times whatever in the bracket until we get the four plus four. So what is four plus four, class? Eight. Remember your brackets must come down because you're going to get a completely different total if you did 5 plus 3 and then times 8, right? Yeah. You're going to get a totally different answer. So you've got to do the brackets first because that is part of your grouping. You get 56 if you do it wrong. Yeah. Uh, you'd actually get 64. It is wrong. <laughs> you got to group it first. So what is 3 times 8? 24. Good job, Lucas. Now we bring down the 5. And we don't have to bring the brackets down this time. So that's the challenge. You've got to remember that the brackets are important. It's just like a comma in a sentence, right? If we don't put a comma and somebody reads our sentence, they're going to get the wrong idea. But if we put a comma and we put it in the right place, sometimes it makes a lot of sense, right? All right, so let's go ahead and um, if you're finished with that, let's get it in your journal. Make sure it's on the front page only. You need the right page? Turn on right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's the front page. Um, just don't put it on the back. And it looks like it should be page 21. Yeah. I actually do. Sorry. Yeah. So Colton's missing a page. And your title is going to be Order of Operations. You don't even have the vocabulary on the week from last week. Can we put all of this in our table of contents? Yes. Every time you add a page, you add it to your table of contents.